the F2 tutorial. First thing that we are going to do is let's go to the internet and let's type F2, enter, and the very first website that comes up is the website for F2, of course. Um, so there are two versions that you can download. One's ver one version is for Windows and another version is for Linux. If you have a Mac like myself, you can actually download the version for Windows, but then you have to download another program, which is, which is called Wine Butler. This program is also free, and it's the very first page. If you download it, you can run F2 as well as any .exe file in your computer. So, after you download Wine Butler and you download F2, you have, let's say me, like I I, um, I put my F2 on my desktop. When I double click here on F2, Wine Butler will ask me if I want to run directly from this place. I say yes. Okay. Um, here are all the credits for the program, and I would like to thank Luis Fernando Mata for providing F2 for us for free. And I'll close, and let's maximize this window. There are a couple of drop-downs menu. The first one is file, and then you can save, you can open. Uh, there is a very important one here, it's export screen. You can export as a PDF, and this is very useful if you're preparing your homework, something like that. Okay, the second one, options, and here there is another thing very useful, Un units and number for many. I'll click here, and there is SI kilonewton meters or US units. Let's use US units, the usual foot and inches, kilopounds, and Fahrenheit as temperature. Okay, let's press OK. There are a couple of, uh, of ways that you can insert a node. And you can either insert just by using a grid. If you click here, grid, and then I want to make a grid one foot by one foot, and I want to use a snap. You have those little blocks, and each dot is spaced one foot apart. Okay? You can do that, and you can do like zoom in, and and then you can just start like building a member. Or you can actually insert everything from your keyboard. So let's click the keyboard and then let's click insert a node. And then my first node will be at the zero zero or where it starts my axis. And I'll hit OK. And I'll make, a, at the end of the day, I want to have a beam pinned, pinned, OK, simply supported of 10 feet with a nodal load at the middle and a uniform load on my entire beam. So I'm going to first say x at 5 feet. That's my first, my second node. You hit OK. Let's cancel. Let's, so those two here are zoom and I have a feet world on screen which is this one and it's nothing more than a zoom extent in AutoCAD. I have here my nodes. Um, I want to connect those two nodes and make my first member. So I will release keyboard mode, okay? And I'm going to hit insert member. And I click from here to here. And I have my first member here. Let's do a zoom out. Okay. Uh, the next way that I want to show you how to create a member is just using the snap or the grid. And I'm going to, to click at the last node, and I'll go five blocks from there, and I'll click, and I have my second member. If I actually want to see the dimensions, I can click here, insert dimensions line. I go to the first node, I go to the last, and I'll see like five feet. And then I go again, five feet, just to check. Okay, I have a beam 10 feet long. I'm going to zoom. Um, so if I don't want to have the selection mode, I can actually click at the mouse, this little arrow. Let's delete the dimensions for now. They will be on, on our way. The way that F2 is organized is that we are going from left to right. 
here we are going to put like material pro properties and cross section supports uh, we are going to apply the loads and at the end of the day we are going to have all the diagrams look you can select actual force diagram shear diagram moment diagram or the displaced shape and we should follow these steps just go from left to right okay first thing material parameters this is the way that we are going to always do a new thing we are first create a new we give a name, so in this case I'll say it's steel and when I go to material type there are a couple of default options, there is steel or there is concrete now I'm going to just use steel, okay? done, and I have a steel of a Young's model of 30,000 KSI with a gamma and with a alpha I can apply this to all or I can apply to members in separate so let's say that I highlighted this member it, when it's in red it's highlighted and I can apply to just this member or I can apply to both so I highlight this I have to hold shift hold shift to select another one and then I apply to both or I just apply all which is easier I have a material defined now I'm going to define the cross section I hit on the section properties again create a new one and let's say it's a circle section type I can actually choose a couple of section types here and there is a circle I'm going to select this I say done and ask me for the diameter I'm going to say it's a 10 inches diameter so you can see that it actually calculates for us what is the Y bar or where is the neutral axis the area and the inertia I can apply to everything. Great. Now the next the next tool that we can do is the support conditions. Let's click here. Supports they are applied to nodes. So I'm going to select this node and I said it's a simply supported beam. So I'll select this node and I'm going to restrain in X and restrain in Y this node. When I apply, I can actually see this nice shape here as we have on our books of a support that restrains in X and Y. On the other side, I'm going to release displacement in X but restrain Y. When I click here, I have this support on rollers, which is exactly what I want. I could also apply springs and I could also prescribe displacements. I will leave that for our next tutorial. I can release rotations. This is very useful if you are designing or analyzing a truss. I can say that there is no constraint, there is no actual deformation, it's a rigid member. Let's just leave as it is. And then we start applying the loads. You can see that there is nodal force, there is moment, uniform load, there is linear load, thermal load, or load train. If I click on the first one, nodal force, let's apply a load right here in the middle of 10 keeps. First thing I say, create a new. I'm going to name this as P equal 10 keeps. Done. Okay. So the force is a vertical force. Let's apply a force of 10 keeps. When I apply, you can see that the arrow is going up. This is not what we want. We want it to go down. Um, and this is because F2 considers that XX goes from left to right. And the YX goes from bottom to top. What we can do? Just put a minus sign right in front of the 10. And there you go. It's going down now. I don't want to apply any moment. I want to apply a uniform... A, a, a uniform load. Same thing, create a new one and let's call this W equal 10 K per foot. 10 kips per foot. Or 10 it's too much, let's go one. Done. Same thing in KY in the Y directions and now you know I just put minus one 
and I select the members that I want to apply this load and I apply it. Great. Now we are ready to run the model and let's say that we want to see the shear force diagram. I click here and ask me to save it. I'm going to save on my desktop as tutorial tutorial one. Save. Okay, here is my shear diagram. Start with 10 kips and then goes down to 5, minus 5, minus 10. One thing that I can do is I can display the reaction. So I go display and I can say display reaction values. And then you can see those arrows. And the arrows are crossed with a line. Those are reactions and not force applied. And you can see that there is a reaction of 10 kips here and another reaction of 10 kips here. Let's just remove this. Display, I don't want to display reaction, I don't want to display reaction values. Great. Now I want to see the displaced shape. I have the displaced shape here. Uh, when I click at any point, I see here at the top. So I am at x of 4.21 for this member. Let's start from 0 to 5. Total length of 5. I'm at 421. And the displacement in y is minus 3.84 e to the minus 2 inches. And I can change from that place to another place. I can go here to this node and I can see what is the displacement at this specific point. The same can be done for shear actually. You can go at any specific point and see what is the shear that you have there. Well, the next thing that we have to show is what is the uh, moment diagram. I click here and here's my moment diagram and probably you are finding a little funny that the moment diagram is going down and then you're thinking well F2 is wrong and it's not. It's just the way that uh, we consider in Brazil is that the moment diagram uh, faces down instead of facing up as they do here in America. Um, so you just have to flip this graph up and then you have exactly as you have in your textbook, okay? So at any point that I click, you see what is the moment that we have. Same thing, positive, even though it's going down, it's positive, so it means that the bottom chords of your cross-section are in tension while the top is in compression. Okay, so this is our tutorial. Thank you very much for watching it. Bye.